Gmail tutorial for beginners. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'll be showing you guys how you can use Gmail. I'll be showing you guys a step-by-step -step guide as well as some simple tips and tricks that could help you in simplifying your work with Gmail. Now I know a lot of people are currently coming back to using Gmail especially because Google has introduced things like Google Meet so you can meet and conference online using their platform. You also have a lot of other tools that are linked with Google. So Google or Gmail has become again a primary email service. Now for anyone that has never used Gmail before we're going to break it down very simply and I'm going to be showing you guys how you can compose emails how you can do autofill, how you can undo your mails and you do have that option. You can also do scheduled sending, changing your default text styles, email grouping, adding your email signatures, as well as an out of office message, email forwarding and finding and searching for mail. So we're gonna be covering all of that in this particular video. Let's jump right in. Now over here, I have logged on to my Gmail account. Now on the top left, you're going to find this icon, a pencil icon. From here, you can click on compose and this will show you a tab at the bottom right. So this is going to be your new message or new mail tab. And you can pop this out like so. And once you do that, you can get started with typing out your mail. Now, over here, you will see at your recipients, you have CC where you can add recipients and you can add BCC recipients. This is a bit too complicated. It's really not something you should worry about too much. You can see over here, you can directly link your contact over here as well. But the most simplest method is to directly just add people to the to section. This is more so related to forwarding and non-forwarding. Now, once you have done that, you can add the subject. So let's say whatever subject we want to type in. For example, I have a catch up update so I can type in the subject over here. And then after that, I can compose the mail. Now, here we are going to move towards the second feature of Gmail that we're going to talk about, and that is autofill. Now, if we take a look at autofill, you can simply go on ahead and type something. So let's say I want to add, good morning, I hope this. And when you start with these kinds of standardized lines, you will see I only typed my part till this. And by default, Google is giving me suggestions on what I might be typing. So it basically reads what you are typing. And if it knows what direction your mail is going into, it will give you a suggestion if that is what you want to type. Now, if I do want to type that, I hope this email finds you well, I can simply go on ahead and press the tab button on my keyboard. So you find the tab button on the top left of your keyboard, just click on that and it will type everything. And instead of having to type out these pleasantries every time, I can use the tab button. Whenever it suggests a line, it automatically is going to be filled out. So this is how we can fill out our lines. Now, once we have started composing our email, we have also used Smart Compose. Let's get started with actually changing some of the styling of our mail. Now, whenever you are typing text within Google, you will see on the bottom, you have a tab. This has a undo redo tab, as well as a fonts tab. Now from here, you can alter the font and then the new text that you type is going to be in the new font. Now, if you have already typed out a mail and you want to change the text, you can select the text and then select from the bottom, the new font that you want to use like so. You can pick out from fonts over here. You can also alter the size of the text as well. So if you want, you can type in a larger text. You can also make it bold, italic, underlined, change the alignment, as well as add attachments. Now on the bottom, you also have your attachment options. You can click on attach files. You can add hyperlinks as well as emojis, connect items from Drive, photos, as well as add a confidential file add signatures and also create templates. Now, these are some of the basic features. Moving on towards scheduling. 
Now with scheduling, you can choose to directly send any mail directly by clicking on send on the bottom left. Or if you want to schedule this for a particular time in the future, you can click on this icon right beside the send button and you can click on schedule send. Once you click on schedule send, it gives you three options and then you can also click on pick a date and time and then you can pick out any date and time and then click on schedule send. Now, once you schedule a mail, you can hover your mouse on the left and you will see a tab called scheduled. So over here, you're going to see all the mail that you have scheduled but haven't sent out as of yet. So you guys can see this will show that I have scheduled this mail and it will also display the date on the right side of the mail. Now, moving on towards our next feature. Now, did you know that you can actually undo a mail? And I'll show you guys how you can change the time where you have the opportunity to undo. Now, if we compose an email or send out an email, again, I will type out a simple mail. Now, if I just click on send over here, instantly I have the option to undo on the bottom left. This is by default a five second option. So there is a five second delay or a five second lag that happens whenever you send out a mail. Now, because of this five second lag, in case you sent out the mail to the wrong person, in case you forgot something and you realized you were meant to add something, if you attached a file or if you forgot to attach a file or if you attached a incorrect file, you have the option to always go back and undo the mail and then resend it. Whereas if you want to add a larger or shorter delay period or lag, you also can do that in your Gmail settings. To do this, click on the settings icon. These are your quick settings. So you're gonna click on see all settings over here. Once you click on see all settings, you're going to scroll down to the bottom. And once you scroll down, you should be able to find your email lag somewhere around here. We have our variation responder shortcuts nudges smart replies yes so it's right at the top i missed it uh we have directly in our general settings at the top you have undo settings it's present over here now over here by default five seconds is the time selected you can convert this into 10 seconds 20 seconds or even 30 seconds if you want a larger delay this will allow you to ensure that there are no mistakes that are made from your Gmail account. Now, moving on, let's learn how we can actually change the default text style of our mail. So if we want to change the default style, we can go on ahead again, access our settings. You can do that on the top right, or you can also click on more on the left, then click on manage labels over here and then click on general settings. Now, once you have done that, you can go on ahead and see all of your settings. Now to change your default styles, again, in your general settings, you can scroll down and you will see your grammar suggestions that are turned on by default, spelling, autocorrect, as well as smart composition. Then you can also scroll down and alter the stars. You can also add some keyboard shortcuts, icons, text, labels, as well as your default styles at the bottom. Now, currently we have our date, so we can add our variation responder where it sends an automated reply to incoming messages. So if a contact sends you several messages, this reply will be sent to them at most four times a day. Now, over here, you have the ability to customize a lot about your mail. And you can even customize the way that you view your mail by going into the inbox section. You can see by default, you have different categories that are created. Now, grouping mail can be really ineffective for certain people. So if you do not want to group out your mail into promotions or socials or updates or forms, you can uncheck these options and all of your mail will appear as it was delivered to you. So if I uncheck these options over here, and I click on save changes at the bottom and I go back into my inbox. Now you will see I don't have any categorization. So I have basic categories that were that are created by default, but those would sync up and you know mail would not be filtered out. Instead, I would see everything in directly in the inbox section. 
Now, if you want to alter this and create categories, again, go into settings. Once you go into settings, you're going to go back ahead and go into your inbox. And then you can choose the categories that you want to include. From here, if you scroll down, you can also add importance markers. So you can click on show markers over here to show a marker. And you can also choose whether or not Google has access to know which things you find important. So it can use your past actions to predict which type of messages are going to be important to you. Now below that you also have filtered mail so if you want to override filters or if you want to have all of your messages directly in your inbox. Then click on save changes at the bottom and there you have it. Now moving on let's go on ahead and take a look at the next feature of Google emails or Gmail which is adding our e-signature. Now, this is really exciting and this was something that I found to be super cool when I first learned about it. So you can do that again in your settings. So click on the gearbox icon on the top right and then click on see all settings. Then directly in the general tab, you can scroll down and once you scroll down, you will have e-signatures over here. We have, our, where is it? It is in the general settings. I think I missed it again. Desktop notifications. Yeah. So over here, almost at the bottom, you have signature. And you will see that this is appended at the end of all outgoing messages. You can click on create new and add your signature name. So we're just going to add our name like this. A lot of times in academia, people like to write their name as well as write their position, designation, mail, or any other type of academic information. You can also do this in the corporate world. You can add your designation, the current company you're working with, and this just makes your email look so much more professional. Have you just sent a regular old mail to a coworker or a opportunity? Now you can also create multiple. You can see at the bottom, you also have signature default. So by default, I'll select this one and I can also choose if I want to include my signature on replies and forward uses as well. Now going back into our basic inbox, let's proceed with how we can create our basic messages and how we can forward these messages so let's say i got this meeting notification so i have this meeting notification over here and i want to forward this message so to do that i can open up this mail and i can click on these three dots on the right and then i can click on forward once i click on forward i can add the other person that i am forwarding this to now you will see by default, Google will write forwarded message. If you want, you can remove that and it will have the exact same thing copied and pasted. Now, another thing to note is that if you want to forward a message, but you don't want to include the PDF or you don't want to include the attachment that is provided with that forwarded message, you can scroll down and you will see the particular attachment. Click on this cross icon over here and then the attachment will be removed. Click on send and your mail will be sent out. Now let's move towards the next feature which is out of office message. So if you want to include a out of office message which means that people are notified, we are again going to go into settings. You can find all of this in the settings and you can scroll down and you will have this option of vacation responder. Click on vacation responder on and you can add a day of your vacation. So that means that you're not going to be available for vacation now because you are at vacation. Now, another great feature about this is that you can also send this response to only people you know. So you might not want to tell random people that are emailing you that you are on vacation. So for that purpose, you can directly add this take this option at the bottom to only send this message to people that are in your contact. And you also have the availability of showing indicators that are personal level. So it displays an arrow by messages that are sent to your address and a double arrow that means that messages are sent to only you. This means that this might be a direct message to you and you can check it earlier than your other messages. Now, again, 
I'm going to alter some settings and we're going to take a look at what Gmail looks like once we alter some settings. So I want to use the Tahoma text and I want to make it large and I want it to be in a, I'll go a dark gray color and I'm going to use Comic Sans. Let's be repulsive today. And we're going to make it large like this. And we're going to use a dark pink color like this. And then we're just going to click on save changes. I'm going to turn off the vacation responder. Click on save changes at the bottom. Once we click on save changes, I'm going to click on compose. And once I click on compose and start composing this mail, you guys will see that even when I am not altering my format, it still is providing me with a different format that I set up as my default. And you can really make your mails more distinctive, not by adding the Comic Sans font. I'm not going to say that this is a nice one. You can use the Gourmand font and the Gourmand font is going to be a lot more professional whereas still being different as compared to the sans serif that we are used to seeing with gmail i even prefer the general serif one more than using the sans serif it just provides me with a just a tiny alteration that can really change the aesthetic of your mail now moving on towards our final segment of this video we're just going to do a quick feature and then we're going to wrap it up. Now one thing to note is that a lot of people do find it difficult to manage their mail. Now with this if you're finding it difficult to manage your mail you might be mixing up mail. So to make this easier by default Google provides you with this primary inbox and this is our primary inbox and all the mails that we have seen highlighted all are made darker in a slightly darker shade and the ones I haven't opened up are light. Now you will usually see this is a new mailbox so I haven't organized it in such a way but you will see that your mails that you have already read are sent to the bottom and unread mails are sent to the top. You guys can see that this is one of my mailboxes and all of the unread mail is going to be at the top whereas your read mail is going to be at the bottom. So if you want to search for something you've already read, just look at the mails that are slightly darker. And if you are looking for something that you haven't read, just look at the top of your mailbox. Again, if you're looking for something particular, you can just search for it in the top over here. And once you search for it on the top, you would be able to find the mail pretty easily. If you know the subject matter or the sender, you can easily search it from the top. You also have filter options. So you can filter out if you know certain information. So let's say this mail was supposed to be from ManyChat. So I can just search and filter these mails out. So what has ManyChat sent us till now? And this can be a great way to find and organize your mail. Now wrapping it up, I do think that it's really important to build categories and you can click on the left over here to end click on manage labels to manage your labels you can see we have a start inbox sent chats we have different categories we can add and different labels so you can click on create label and you can create a new label name your labels are going to be different from your categories categories are created by default and labels can be subcategorizations or further ways to organize mail these can be things like your clients. So let's say if your deals are regarding your water bottle deal, so everything that's related, all my meals that are related to this particular deal could be marked with this label so they're easier for me to access. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you are now able to get started with Gmail. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any further questions or queries, leave those in the comment box down below. Make sure to subscribe and like and I will catch you guys in the next video.